Welcome to Lifecycle Talks, a series of talks presenting the research front to keep you up to date with the science and application of the Lifecycle perspective. Today's Lifecycle Talk is how to assess the, env the environmental performance and impact of emerging technologies. And we will increase our knowledge and understanding of the research field of prospective LCA and take part of results on how, on how to assess the environmental performance and impact of emerging technologies. My name is Anna Wikström, and I'm happy to welcome our guest for today, Matti Jensen, senior researcher at Chalmers University of Technology. Warm welcome, Matti. And before we start, I just want to inform you about some practical information. All Lifecycle talks will be published and available on the Swedish Lifecycle Center YouTube channel. And the raise hand function will not be used in Lifecycle talks. Back to you, Matti. I'm curious. What prompted you start studying this research field? Well, when I when I moved to Chalmers, I started working in a project that looked uh, or that was um, developing new technology for bioethanol uh, production. So, without uh, knowing the knowing the term, if you will, uh, I was uh, already back then doing some sort of prospective LCA, looking at um, environmental impacts um, of of this of this new technology and how it will behave in the future by for instance looking at what if the energy background system uh, becomes less carbon intensive how will that affect the use of this new technology so that is where uh, that is where this interest in prospective lca started let's put it that way great thank you so much and now please it's time for your life cycle talk then I'll start, and um, here is the outline of the of the talk. So first, I will talk about what is prospective LCA and what are its uh, challenges. Then the the main part of the talk is about uh, methods for future modeling in in prospective LCA, and then I will dive a bit deeper into a new method for building and assessing future scenarios and give an example of an av application of that. So what is prospective LCA? Here you see two definitions, uh, which are which were given in, in two separate papers, one done in our group at Chalmers and one done at the University of Leiden. And uh, when you look closely to these uh, uh, two definitions, you can see quite a lot of similarities. So it is about studies of emerging uh, technologies what add, what the Kukarachi, the second definition adds to to our definition is that uh, a comparison with a, an incumbent technology is is being done. And that is indeed also an important aspect of of doing prospective LCA. Yeah, sure, you may have your emerging technology, but how will it perform against a technology that it would eventually replace in the future? So then about the challenges in prospective LCA. And so here you see the um, hopefully well-known uh, steps in, in doing life cycle assessment. So we have goal and scope, inventory analysis, the life cycle impact assessment and interpretation. And in each of these steps, you will find challenges for, uh, for prospective LCA. For instance, in, in the goal and scope, uh, definition you need to define yeah what is it that you're analyzing and how are you going to model it so in case of of prospect prospective lca you you may want to think about well how far into the future am i going to model my system what is the functional unit for a new and incumbent technology what is actually the incumbent uh, technology when it comes to inventory analysis then it is important to um, know i have knowledge about how will new and incumbent technological systems develop um, so that is more related to the foreground system if you will uh, but at the same time you also need to know how do background systems develop you need to model the foreground and the background systems at the same at the same point in time otherwise you get this uh, temporal uh, discrepancy and thirdly um, 
what may, may also be important to know is what is the market share of new technology in the in the future. Then when it comes to the life cycle impact assessment, with new technology, there may come new uh, unexpected uh, impacts. And perhaps uh, over, over time, the characterization factors that are being used in, in calculating environmental impacts based on the inventory data, they may change as well. Lastly, in the interpretation step, you need to, um, because we are modeling into the future, we need to uh, be aware of the fact that you may have increased uncertainty and then how are you going to deal with that? And perhaps it's even so that there will be uh, unknown uh, unknowns. So it, it basically things that we just don't know uh, about the, the future. Like uh, we saw recently, oh, uh, there is a pandemic or oh, there is a war going on in, in Europe. This may affect things. The next slides, I will give a uh, a brief over literature overview of different uh, uh, future modeling tools that are available in the literature. And I will start here with this uh, this um, method that was uh, developed for the screening of emerging technologies, where. Um, First of all, the potential areas of concern were identified and also that and technology pathways were identified. So what are the bad options to, to discard them? Then next, uh, a three-step three process for relative comparison of technologies was, uh, was, um, was proposed. And then uh, the four, in the fourth and the fifth steps, you, uh, you, um, you iterate and see how the technology develops. And at the fifth step, the finally the comparison is is quantified. <clears throat> from that from that comparison, then a best uh, emerging technology can be selected. In future modeling, you may also need to model processes that do not yet exist. And here you see a hierarchy of methods used in, in uh, the generation of life cycle inventory data, and in this case for chemicals, uh, with respect to the data and time requirements and accuracy. And you can see that this goes from uh, to get planned data. So basically, uh, the, uh, pro the process does exist. Uh, but then it becomes uh, more uh, relevant for process that do not yet exist is when you uh, can use a process simulation tool like like Aspen that is very much used in the chemical industry uh, all the way down to just omit actually the process because you just don't know what is going on and in between there you see a, a, a gradual uh, decrease in uh, in data and time requirements but also a decrease in accuracy so it here, this uh, this uh, hierarchy claims that process simulation is is the most accurate, uh, if you will, way to to model uh, processes that do not yet exist. Then we have the scale up of processes in in life cycle assessment, um, and I will only give you an example of a uh, an LCA scale up framework. Uh, but you can also yeah do uh, use scale up rules. Uh, and even there is now even work on uh, learning curves uh, with regards to to scale up. But here you see a proposal for an LCA scale up framework, and what is important to um, to see here is that um, both uh, technology experts and LCA experts should collaborate closely in order to. Um, come up with, uh, well, first of all, a uh, a good emerging technology, but then also uh, continue to collaborate along the development of this um, uh, of this uh, of this technology. So technology experts should be involved and uh, technology scenario development should be reported by them. Then LCA experts define a full flow chart for doing the life cycle assessment and report on how these technology scenarios have been translated into a uh, LCA modeling um, uh, or a the 
an LCA model of the of the process system or product system. So, like I said, uh, there should be cooperation between uh, LCA and, and technology uh, experts. And also here, as part of this uh, framework, different methods for data estimation, as we saw in the previous slide, uh, should be um, uh, uh, is, is proposed going again from process simulation to uh, stoichiometric uh, calculations. Then we come to uh, scenario uh, scenarios uh, and uh, the, the use of scenarios for um, using relevant for future for foregrounds and backgrounds in, in life cycle assessment. And there are different methods and, te and techniques uh, for this. So uh, you can classify scenarios uh, as, as is shown here. Uh, you can have three, three types, if you will. First of all, uh, you, you can construct predictive scenarios, so how the future will develop. You, you can construct explorative scenarios, how the future could develop. But you can also construct normative scenarios, and then you would look into how the future should develop. And this latter uh, type of scenarios uh, has a lot of similarities with with what what is called backcasting. So you project a, a, a wished for situation in the future and start looking back at how can I arrive at, uh, at that. Now, the use of uh, scenarios in, uh, in LCA is not something new. Uh, already in 2004, a report was, um, uh, was published by a CETAC Europe LCA working group who gave recommendations for scenario development in, in life cycle assessment. And here you see uh, the definition of um, scenarios in, from that report. So it's, it states that it is a description of a possible future situation relevant for specific LCA applications based on specific assumptions about the future and when relevant also including the presentation of the development from the present to the future. Uh, so yeah, uh, Scenarios have been around in, in life cycle assessment, but uh, arguably it become they become more important when doing prospective LCA because from this point, uh, from the current point in time, we look into the future again. Um, however, there are challenges of using explorative or normative scenarios in LCA, and uh, one is that uh, there is a positive positivist sorry positivist tradition and uh, in in LCA and a, and a reliance on measured data. And there is this inherent uncertainty of the future that needs to be, uh, needs to be dealt with. So in general, the methodological steps for scenario development are that you generate uh, and collect ideas, uh, knowledge and views in the generation step, then followed by the integration step, you model uh, the modeling includes a number of different techniques for integrating parts into holes. And then lastly, a consistency check is uh, done to uh, ensure this consistency between or within uh, scenarios. So here you see this uh, new scenario development method that we, uh, um, together with uh, colleagues in the project, have, uh, have developed. And... Um, it consists of, well, mainly four steps with one optional step. First of all, there is the scenario field uh, identification, which is very much in line with the goal and scope definition in, in LCA. So what is it that you're analyzing and how are you going to do it? And then the, the following three steps, the key factor identification, the key factor analysis, and the scenario generation are very much a part of the inventory analysis of um, of LCA. I, I do not have time now to go deeply into each of, uh, of the steps that are de depicted here, but I refer to the uh, publication that is that is on its way, uh, where you, uh, in, in hopefully uh, two months' time, you can read all the details about the, the proposed uh, method. So uh, these um, these three steps that are part of the inventory analysis are about identifying relevant parameters, 
So you need to get an overview on the relevant parameters and, and relevant connections between these parameters using, for instance, causal uh, loop diagrams. Um, you need to combine assumptions into future scenarios about these uh, parameters. And then these can then be quantified for inventory parameters that are really used in the LCA model, but can also be qualitative or descriptive for external parameters that are not used in the LCA model itself. So this could, for instance, be the, the GDP or the, the uh, general global uh, economic situation. Lastly, um, you need to combine these assumptions into future scenarios and uh, an appropriate selection of consistent scenarios needs to be made. Now, this was all done in a uh, paper that was uh, published earlier this year. Uh, done by one of our PhD students uh, at, uh, at our division. And this was a prospective LCA of carbon fiber composites. And the goal here was to compare carbon and glass fiber reinforced uh, composites applied in car mirror brackets. And in this work, um, uh, Frida, she developed three uh, scenarios. Uh, one with a strong focus on uh, the bioeconomy, uh, which focuses on decreasing emissions throughout the system and using bio-based materials. And uh, a second uh, future scenario was of having a strong focus on circular economy, with, uh, which focused on recycling and using, reusing materials and decreasing waste generation. And the third scenario was a combination of, the, of these two uh, previous scenarios where a strong focus on a circular bioeconomy uh, was put forward. Putting this all together, um, we were uh, we were able to um, generate uh, results for both uh, the glass fiber reinforced polymers (GFRP) and carbon fiber reinforced polymers the (CFRP) for today and for these three scenarios. And what this shows uh, here, you see the climate impact for these um, for these uh, scenarios and for the two materials. And we can see that the uh, scenario one and three uh, outperform the scenario two with the focus on on circular economy. So in in this case, apparently the focus on using bio based materials and having a renewable background, energy background system, uh, for example, uh, is more beneficial than having a high, higher recycling rate, uh, for instance, or a dematerialization, uh, if you will, of, uh, of, um, uh, for, the, for this particular case. So this brings me to the conclusion. Um, prospective LCA provides a framework to assess future products and services. Uh, it's... Um, it, it can contain various methods for data generation and the development of consistent future scenarios may play a central role in prospective LCA, as I hope I have uh, shown with this very short example at the end. And with that, uh, I thank you for listening to this, uh, uh, to this talk. Thank you, Matthew, for your presentation. Uh, well done. I have some questions for you. Uh, your research within Prospective LCA, why is it important and for whom is it important? In order to guarantee a uh, more sustainable future, if you will, uh, to put it in grand terms, one also needs to guarantee that the technologies that we will use in, in the future are up to standards when, uh, trying, to, when trying to achieve that. And so one, one is, well... Force is maybe a strong word, but one must take into account the future to see how uh, technology that is currently in development, maybe maybe even only at at uh, at the lab scale, is is performing is performing well, uh, is reducing climate impact, uh, for example, and um, prospective LCA uh, can be a tool to uh, to achieve that, uh, I think. And uh, yeah, when it comes to who is it important, uh, I I would say for society as a whole, it is important. 
but especially uh, for industries that are really focusing on the on the development of uh, of new technology or where there is rapid uh, technological development uh, at the moment. Okay, thank you. And we have several people from industry listening today. And if someone in the audience feels inspired and would like to carry out the study, do you have any guidance on where to start? There are no standards yet uh, for uh, for doing a prospective uh, LCA. Um, but where to start? Uh, well, you need to start at the start in, in LCA, and that is the goal and scope. So you need to very carefully think about what is it that I want to analyze and how am I going to do it? What are the assumptions that I need to make? Uh, how can I, uh, what, uh, how do I want to explore how my um, technology will perform in the future? Is it using a, a predictive scenario or is it using a um, uh, an explorative exploratory scenario or is it a normative type of scenario that you that you want to that you want to um that you want to use um so in 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 a, in a sense it is um very much the same i would i would think as doing a conventional if you will life cycle assessment with the complication that you need to start looking for future data or generating uh, future data and as i hope i have uh, I have shown there are several ways uh, to do that. Um, uh, when, when looking at the chemical industry, for example, uh, one can use process simulation to generate results. Uh, and if if that is very difficult because one does not know yet how the process will exactly look like, then even um, doing calculations based on stoichiome stoichio stoichiometry uh, related to chemical uh, reactions may at least give a an idea about the environmental impact of a certain chemical uh, process in this case. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. Uh, I will continue with next question. Uh, what research within Prospective LCA do you think uh, could be valuable to carry out onwards? I think the uh, further development of um, scenario methods uh, would be would be very useful. Uh, also, um, the 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 way to to implement this um, software wise so that it becomes easier for um, uh, for practitioners to use a prospective LCA uh, still requires further uh, further development. And there is heavy heavy development uh, ongoing. Uh, for instance, uh, using data from these large integrated assessment models uh, to use those in creating new uh, future background systems uh, that are also a part uh, of of doing a thorough uh, prospective uh, LCA. Um, I already mentioned standards, so perhaps there could be. Um, although, yeah. But whether or not that is research, uh, I, I, I will not start discussing that. Um, there should be development of, of standards, I, I, I think, uh, to, to help industry uh, forward in, in using a prospective LCA. Um, what else could there be? Um, uh, impact assessment uh, methods. Um, how do we deal with unknown impacts uh, or new impacts? So there, uh, it, it would be a part of such a prospective LCA, but there is also continued uh, development of, uh, of uh, impact, assessment, uh, impact assessment methods. And then lastly, in, in, the, uh, in the interpretation step, uh, the application of uh, of advanced statistical uh, techniques, or maybe uh, even uh, earlier in uh, when I think about data in the inventory analysis, uh, the use of um, of yeah of data science, so to say, data mining uh, and so on, may may yeah could also be a, a field to to develop further. Um, one last thing. 
uh, is um, what, what we have focused on mostly now is uh, prospective attributional LCA. Uh, so what about prospective consequential LCA? And how to go about uh, doing that? Uh, that is less clear at the moment. Uh, so that is also a field for further uh, or a topic for further research, I, I would think. Great, thank you. Uh, and you have several years of research experience in prospective LCA. Uh, could you say what is your biggest aha experience during this time? I'm not sure. Um, this this project that I mentioned at the very uh, very when you uh, when you asked the warm up question, the bioethanol production. One uh, one striking result there was that the enzyme production and use had a very very high contribution to the overall impact. Uh, that that was that was a an aha moment, but I'm not sure if that would if I if I would classify that as a prospective LCA <laughs> aha moment. Uh, maybe what isn't uh, more of an aha moment then is how to reduce that uh, that impact, and it can be it can be reduced. Um, if, uh, through um, a, a cleaner production, uh, of course, of the of the uh, of the enzyme, but also, for instance, through enzyme recycling, uh, which is also technology that is, as far as I know, still uh, under under development. Uh, and with that, you could also make yeah then the bioethanol production process uh, cleaner. Um, maybe another aha moment is. Um, Maybe on the on the on the software side, which I find uh, very uh, a very good development, is that you actually can construct uh, very detailed uh, background systems, uh, software-wise, um, which is which is a very good thing to have this consistency between foreground and and background uh, systems uh, in terms of uh, the uh, the temporal uh, aspect. And that you can, uh, well, uh, the, the source from those data, you can debate about that, whether you should use an integrated assessment model or not. Um, but I, yeah, I, I, I think that that is a, a very good uh, development. Great, thank you. And uh, continue with the next question. If you were to choose completely freely, uh, which industry would be the most interesting to dive into and do a prospective LCA with and why? <laughs> um, I'm, I'm a chemical engineer by training, so I'm, I'm leaning towards the chemicals industry, but uh, which has a large footprint. Uh, uh, um, it, it does does contribute to, uh, to several uh, environmental problems, but maybe a bit... Um, Maybe a bit closer to to home, and also what what we see and at uh, at Chalmers in terms of uh, um, of work <clears throat> work being done is uh, nanomaterials, uh, battery technology, um, uh, what else? Yeah, that, let's keep it at that. It's it's such a broad question; it's a bit difficult yes. to answer. I think. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you so much, Matte Jensen, Senior Researcher at Chalmers University of Technology. Uh, we are closing this Life Cycle Talks. And if you're interested to learn more about the field of Perspective LCA, uh, you will find more information at these links. And here are two projects that we're showing right now. And we have also selected two publications, Assessment of Emerging Technologies, Recommendation for Prospective LCA, and Emerging Technologies. And all these links are available at the calendar post for the event at lifecyclecenter.se. And please feel free to contact, oh, sorry, please free to contact Matty, uh, Matty uh, if you have any questions. And here you can see his email address. The Lifecycle Talks are published by the Innovation Cluster for the Lifecycle Perspective and Swedish Lifecycle Center. And next talk will be giving during spring on negative emissions with Cecilia Sundberg at SLU. And to ensure you don't miss this, follow us at LinkedIn and subscribe to our newsletter.
thanks for listening and thank you again, Matty.